All right, welcome back to uh, Clyden class to the Lemoyne Center. I'm here with the County Commissioners. If you'd introduce yourselves, please. Hi, I'm Diana Irie Vaughn, Chair of the Washington County Board of Commissioners. And I'm the new guy, uh, Washington County Commissioner Nick Sherman. Thank you very much. All right, so um, the kids, we've been walking them through the history of Washington County, and you know, I personally found it really interesting reading up on the Whiskey Rebellion and all the dynamics there, and it's. There, there's a lot of intense um, interest in Washington, but can you sort of tell us about, um, just give us an impression of sort of Washington politics, a little bit about like, what are the kind of people you represent, you know? We represent a very diverse population, depending on where you're at in the county, where you're from, where you're living. Um, the median income here is around $70,000 a year, but we have areas um, in the county and school districts where the majority of the children are on free or reduced lunches. So we have, a, we have a number of children that are living in poverty conditions that require some assistance. So you get both ends of the spectrum here. Yep. We, I always said we divide it by three each. The, it's the rural farmland areas, it's the Monongahela Valley and, and, uh, and the city of Washington. And then we also have the, the Peters Township, North Germain, South Germain, what we commonly refer to as the S.C. Uh, the, the 19 corridor. So we are uh, three different uh, kind of little cities here, three different uh, areas, but at the same time, I think that uh, we all come together very nicely as well. So, thanks for uh, giving us a little bit of heads up. Um, I'm from out of state, so I'm still learning the area. And it's interesting to me that, like, a walk, I'll drive right by this mansion, and then I'll drive by a whole, whole row of row apartments, and then right into farmland. You know, I'll see cows up on the hill, and I'll go, wow, that changed very quickly. So, <laughs> thanks for that. Was actually a very nice summary. Um, what kind of job does a county commissioner do? What don't they do? What, what are your responsibilities? And what lies outside of those responsibilities? Please. Um, our budget is just over $200 million a year that we direct uh, for programming, most mandated programs uh, that mm -hmm. we're directing funds to. Uh, we have about 850 employees, seven unions, four county parks, an airport. Um, we run all the public safety, so when children are calling 911, that's us. Uh, we have a lot of human service agencies, everything from behavioral health and developmental services, drug and alcohol, um, children need services, veterans affairs, homeless assistance. Uh, we, we have so many responsibilities. We also manage the pension funds of the um, employees, and we, as a board of commissioners, sit on what is called the prison board, where we provide oversight for our correctional facility. So it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, I was about to say, that's... I'm glad you answered that, because like half that, I was like, oh, that's right. But no, I'm not joking. Uh, yeah, there, uh, with addition of what we do do, I mean, a, a common misconception of a lot of people on Facebook messages or that you know you run into in the street, they will ask you a very uh, legislative question. Hmm. You know, where are you on this tax thing? What, what are, what are you going to do about House Bill, you know, uh, 2017 or whatever it would be, and you know, we're not legislators. This is the executive branch. We run the county. So very similar to what the governor does to the state. The, the simplest way I can explain this is what the governor is to the state, we are for the county. Uh, so we, we do that. In addition to that, there is no legislative for the county. So we actually do both. We're the legislator and the executive branch. So it all goes through us. Um, <clears throat> and the most important thing, and maybe you want to talk about this, is elections. Elections, right? All elections that, that happen. Uh, uh, Diana, uh, Commissioner Irie Vaughn once told me, uh, which I didn't know, uh, is that uh, county government was actually formed to run elections. So we always had a state. We always had, you know, the federal government. But when we looked at how we we're going to have fair and equal elections, that was really the birth of the county government. So at the essence of everything that we do, at the top is the presidential election year. Uh, we saw that there were some balls dropped in the primary because the state department. And the governor's office really put a bunch of changes in. So uh, I know later on today, we're actually meeting with our elections board, and we're going to be talking about how we can fix, uh, the right the wrongs of the things that happened in our primary to make sure that we're, we're a well oiled machine come this presidential election. Sounds like a very, I'd say, a very, uh, there's lots of responsibilities and a lot of, I hate to use the term pressure because I know that that can be misinterpreted, but it sounds like, you know, if someone drops the ball or if something gets misinterpreted or misunderstood, a lot of people can be affected by it, you know? There's a lot of responsibility in this position. And what we have to remember is our positions are about stewardship. We are stewards. And in my opinion, that God has placed in these 
positions of authority to serve his children. And every decision we make, we have to make it with a heart full of stewardship. The financial advisor talks about fiduciary responsibility. And uh, we also have a fiduciary responsibility. But again, we, we always talk about what's best for our constituents. How is this going to affect our constituents? How can we best help our constituents? You know, the question we have to be rolled into is, you know, what's the most important part of this job? And for me, and I know for uh, Commissioner Ari Vaughn, we talk about helping people. Uh, my background is domestic abuse counseling. My background is pediatric drug and alcohol treatment. Uh, I ran a nonprofit for many years. And at the essence of everything, at the end of the day, are we are we helping people? Are we doing the best with your tax dollars to aid all constituents in Washington County? Indeed. Um, so I suppose that you would say that the sort of cornerstone to the most important part of the job is to make sure that what you're doing benefits the people of Washington County with every decision. Absolutely. It has to be in their best interest, mm -hmm. every decision we make. Indeed. All right. So um, I've, I've heard this bounce around a few times from my own civics class and from, you know, just people I run into. They always say that local politics tend to be more important than national politics. You know, and I understand what you were both saying about how the county formed this governance in order to help run an election. But isn't it, I heard the argument that local politics are more important because you're more likely to get through to a county commissioner than you are to get through to the governor or the president. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. um, we're more accessible. We live in the community. We're not in Harrisburg. We're not in D.C., so we're right here more easily accessible, but the bigger part of this is most of the programs that we administer on the county level are mandated by the federal and or state governments and partially funded by them as well. So we have a more direct contact with anything that government, any service that government is providing. Our contact is it, it's closer um, to the individual, the citizen that we represent. So that's probably why it's like that. I'll give you, for instance, at the township level, uh, there's a lot of township roads that um, they are responsible for. And as I said, we have the four county parks and public safety. It, there are so many things that we do that directly touch the lives of the people we represent. I jokingly say it can even go smaller than like townships. Uh, I recently, I'm not recently, but about 10 years ago, my wife and I uh, built a house and there's an HOA. Homeowners Association, and uh, you know, does the President of the United States have a lot of authority over me and what happens on a day-to-day -day basis? No, but you know, you don't put your garbage cans away in time. Uh, you're going to get that letter from the HOA. Uh, you know, you 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 you, you have a lot of too many fireworks in your backyard. You're going to get that letter, and so you know, really, when it comes to the the, the, the macro and micro, the micro mm -hmm. of government is essentially the smaller, the more impact that you will have. Again, you're never going to get a letter from the President saying you did something. However, you will get that letter from the township or from the HOA, so it's very much more hands-on. And I think as as the the government grows, uh, you're getting further removed from it. Um, and I know the two of us always like to do a really good job of just being out with the community, uh, you know, making sure that we're talking to stakeholders, making sure that we're uh, that we're just seeing what the important the important things of the community. I, I work for the United States Congressman. Uh, 16 years ago now, uh, and uh, I remember one time I was just blown away because he stopped in and uh, he just said, there was a group of guys and they were, we were driving through a neighborhood, he stopped and he just said, what's going on? And these gentlemen were flabbergasted, of like, why are you just talking to me? And it was really interesting to hear what was going on, I think it was in some area like Bethel Park or something, so it's important for Diane and I to always make sure that we're, we're out and we're, 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 we're pressing the flesh and we're talking to people and we're seeing what the real issues are. You know, a lot of times we return the phone calls and the emails directly ourselves. We do, and I, the, the new thing too, I you know, I, I talked to about it. Just uh, and, and Pat from my office is back there too. Uh, a lot of things is just now the uh, Facebook messages. Hmm. Uh, we all have Facebook accounts, and we're always constantly showing what we're doing. But at the same time, you get a ton of messages on there. And I remember, you know, 16 years ago when I worked in congressional office, when you had to get a hold of someone, you call that office, you let the message a stack or run back to you. And through social media, it's a much, much more hands-on approach that we have. And people expect you to give, I'm, I'm, uh, a guy sent me a message Saturday at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, I, I got back in my office Monday and I was going through everything and he actually wrote back, you know, like, 
Oh, when are you getting back to me about this? Jeez, do this. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I discourage individuals contacting yeah. me through Facebook mm-hmm. Messenger. I don't check it every day. Yeah. And if they have a need and I need to refer it to someone else, it becomes more of a challenge because I don't have the information um, mm-hmm. officially with the county to refer to another entity right. or a department within the county. So I do discourage individuals trying to contact protect us that way. The best way is call our office, send us an email. Our email addresses are on the website. Yeah. Well, and sometimes we'll make a post and it'll catch fire. There'll be right. thousands of, of or hundreds of, of comments and they will leave something that says like, and I, I want I have a question about X, Y, or Z. And you may or may not see it. it we, yeah, we just don't see it. So it's, it's very tough for us. So we always say that. And we don't see it in a timely fashion. So right. I, I once received a message uh, on Facebook and I didn't see it for two weeks, and it was somebody asking for help with a domestic violence situation. So if they would have called my office, they would have had received assistance immediately. Mm-hmm. So I always encourage them to, to use the correct medium, which would be contacting our office. Someone contacted you instead of calling the police? <laughs> yes. Oh, I've, I've been called on a mm-hmm. holiday weekend at my home um, with a, a mother whose daughter was locked in the bathroom father was beating on the door she announced he was pregnant the mother's calling me at my home got my own home number through information afraid that the father is going to harm the pregnant daughter so yes yes so that's happened I've had people show up at my home showing me bruises on their children to show me my child's been abused so we discourage that we want to do it the right way so we can assist people the way they should be assisted but it happens Okay. Well, I, I just, I'm thinking here because, like, I, I worked with CYS. I've worked with, you know, And thank you for that officers. because that's a tough job. Thank you for stepping up and working. Yeah. And one of the things that sort of amazes me is that, like, talk to the right person. Like, you know, I'll, I, at one point I was receiving calls, like, late in the night, and I said, this is not my area. You need to contact these people. And so it's like you don't carry a, you're not an officer. You don't arrest people I'm I okay um, in those situations please call the police right yes okay <laughs> or so, 911 will get you to where you need to be call 911 precisely precisely um, so we ca- you've already touched on this briefly what about the concerns of Washington County what are the primary ones like each culture across America they always have their own little niche and their values what would you say are sort of the primary things that Washington County residents tend to concern themselves with right now COVID 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 right that that's the that's what's on everyone's mind and most of the calls to our office the questions we're receiving are what's going on what can you tell us where are the hot spots in the county which we don't know because we don't have our own Department of Health in the county mm-hmm. the Pennsylvania Department of Health provides our services so they are the keepers of the information and we only receive what they want to share with us unlike Allegheny County that has its own Department of Health, so they have access to information we do not. Hmm. So that seems to be what's on everyone's mind right now. After that, I would say it's elections, well, it's property taxes. Well, and the big one is, too, with COVID comes uh, with jobs, the economy. Right. Uh, and, and I, I tell you what, before, you know, <clears throat> my election was only a year ago, and I'm like, just to say that the new guy, you know, we talked about the three He's doing a fabulous job. Like, he's you. knocking it out of the park as the new commissioner. Sorry. I appreciate that. I, would, I said, what's your three top priorities? And I said jobs, jobs, and jobs. With jo- jobs comes good economy. With good economy, there's a trickle-down effect of a whole bunch of things that work out. We have less uh, children being abused. You have less abuse of alcohol and drugs. So it's very, very important that we're seeing a, a constant uh, ability to help the constituents. Government doesn't create jobs, but here in Washington County, we have to make sure that we have a platform for jobs to grow. And you know, we talked to the redevelopment authority and other people. And, you know, we, we talked about you know the areas that we're really trying to focus on. Peters Township, North Shore Bank, South Shore Bank, Cecil, South Point are doing well, mm-hmm. uh, and they don't ask for much. Um, and then we have the very rural areas here in Washington County, and they want to be left alone. You knock on a farmer's house and say, "We want to get involved as the county." They're gonna, you might get met with a shotgun because uh, they they just don't. That's just they, they don't want the help. But the areas again. You know, downtown Washington, like a business incubator mm-hmm. group that we can do to bring more jobs in. Um, the Monongahela Valley, uh, New Eagle, Monongahela, Charleroi, Denora. Uh, these are the areas because, mm-hmm. it, again, when you focus on where the help needs to be, that's that's the big thing. So, one COVID is a very is, is the biggest topic now. But as a as a young father, 
as children, my biggest thing is how am I helping my neighbors through this COVID process to make sure that they can still put food on the table, uh, that they can still provide for their kids, that they can still put money away so their kids can go to college. So this is a very important thing. When we look at COVID, the disease and stuff, with the trickle-down effect of what's happening to the economy, you know, people are saying, you hire all about the economy. I'm not all about the economy. Uh, I'm up about both. And I think that we have to make sure there's a gentle balance of making sure that A, we're slowing uh, all the sickness that we can possibly can. At the same time, we're not completely destroying all the restaurants and, and, and things that we have here that we work so hard. You walk through Cannonsburg. It's so, they've done so many wonderful things in Cannonsburg. Uh, Monongahela last year had their 250th uh, anniversary. And that was, I, I grew up in Finleyville. So Monongahela was always a partner in town. And all my, a lot of my friends lived there from the early 80s where it is now is it's it's great the growth that they have there and then they set the uh guinness book uh, yeah. world records for the largest cookie table right in Algehella, and so they're, last year. yeah they're doing so many good things and it's it's so important to me that we don't fall back on all the development that we have mm -hmm. so that's that's what this is about keeping people safe and it's a balance you know balancing the the health of the community the health of the economy but there's so much information and misinformation and conflicting information about COVID, that that's a problem. But we're working on it, uh, putting together a new economic development delivery system now. We want to have a new plan because we need to see an overall county-wide vision, a cohesive vision where all of our partners are working towards the same goal. So we're doing, we're talking a lot about that right now, and we're hoping to be you know, formulating our plan, having it finalized by the end of the year to roll it out, to, to really work harder and smarter to have a diversified economy and attract businesses that we have um, a deficit in that portion of the pie chart to come to Washington County. I actually, um, you've been to uh, Washington County Plaza. Did you ever go to that coffee shop? Uh, there was there was one in there and I saw it shut down and I was like, oh man, because I know how important, like you said, businesses are so important. It affects crime, it affects you know, products and services and employment, and it's it's like a giant spider web, and so it's a very complex situation. That you want to to understand. They're giving us the three minute warning, so I just. Yeah. Oh my! Know. Okay. Um, so, uh, just like you talked about with balance, how do we balance um, what you do spend money on that is very effective versus programs that are ineffective? How do you make determinations? That's a great question. One of the things that we're going to be implementing is um, for capital expenditures, we're going to do a cost-benefit analysis. You know, before we start to repair cars that have 100,000 miles, we look at the overall health of the car. Does it make sense to put this money into repairs, or does it make sense to purchase a new vehicle? Another thing, outcomes tracking for human service programs. A third of our budget is spent in human services, so we're going to start requiring outcomes. One of the things that we worked hard, uh, we wanted to do was to put together um, a single point of entry and exit for human services, and we're getting ready to launch our new program. Yeah, we've already, we, we have the human service department now, which is a mm -hmm. campaign promise that we, we, we did. We got bogged down a little bit through COVID, but I tell you what, we, we were unwavering on that because this is so important to us. With my background, domestic abuse counseling, uh, Commissioner Ari Vaughn's background, uh, and this is just so important to us, and we, you know, when you come in, especially the new guy, it's just a new set of eyes on things. Mm -hmm. And you were saying, these are where we're deficient, these are where we're, we're doing good. And I tell you what, the, the idea of the single point of entry, I said this in my campaign, I didn't accuse anyone of doing a bad job. Mm -hmm. uh, what I found where we were deficient was communicating with each other. So if you have one person coming in and saying, this is what you're gonna do, whether this is a drug and alcohol evaluation, mental health evaluation, I want you to go with a psychologist, I want you to go to these parenting classes, whatever it is, you're gonna go out all these different ways and then it just went out that way. We never knew who did what, where, who's tracking this, what's going on. So the fact that we're bringing it all back in under the same department, uh, I think that we are going to see phenomenal results. We said this: we want to be, we want to be the example of the entire state. You know, I want Bucks County and Philadelphia County to say what happened the last two years in Washington County, and why are they doing so well? And that's we want to lead and be the example. So that sounds absolutely fantastic. Before we go, is there um, anything? I always ask, is there anything that you'd like to talk about before we head out, um, a thought or, some, or a message you'd like to share with the kids? Yes, absolutely. Education is extremely important. 
You need to make sure that you are making the most of the opportunities that you have in your life. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You don't know what opportunities uh, you'll have as you are an adult. So make the most of your education and, and develop a love for learning. Same. Yeah, I agree. You hit the nail on the head. Study hard. Uh, make sure that you know your your work life balance is good. That you're, you're enjoying yourself as a as a child. That you're you know that you're into healthy activities and that you're taking care of yourself. You're reading. You're learning. And uh, live your life. Be all that you can be. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, that'll see us soon. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.